The sense of smell, also known as olfaction, is produced when odorant molecules enter the nasal cavity, dissolve in the mucous lining and reach the olfactory epithelium, where the olfactory receptor cells act as transducers converting the information into electrical signals to send to the brain. There are two main theories of how the sense of olfaction works. The first is the shape theory, where it is thought a molecule's specific shape is complementary to olfactory receptors, allowing it to bind like a lock and key, where various weak bond interactions cause a conformational change of the receptor that triggers a signal to be sent to the brain. The other theory, called the vibration theory of olfaction, or the swipe card model, in its most modern form states that different types of smells are due to the resonant vibrational frequency of the molecule. This is the frequency at which it will naturally vibrate at when set in motion. The frequency depends on what and how the odorant is composed. It is important to remember this frequency relates to an energy, and in order for a signal transduction pathway to be triggered by the receptor, the odorant's corresponding vibrational energy must be such that it allows the tunneling of an electron through the molecule. But what does this tunneling refer to? Quantum tunneling is the phenomena where a particle can pass through a potential energy barrier, which is forbidden by classical physics. In the classical world, this energy barrier can be analogous to a hill or an inclined plane, for example. The passage of a ball, let's say, through or over this hill would be impossible without sufficient kinetic energy. However, if we replace the ball with a quantum particle like an electron and the hill with a potential energy barrier, the particle can violate principles of classical mechanics by penetrating the barrier. This happens regardless if the electron has an energy higher than that of the boundary or not. This is because on quantum scale, objects exhibit wave-like behavior which allows them to tunnel from one side of the barrier to the other without passing over the potential energy barrier. But what does this have to do with the way molecules vibrate? Well, there is a way electron tunneling can be used to study the vibrations of molecules, more exactly their resonant frequencies. This tool is called inelastic electron tunneling spectroscopy. To understand how this works, imagine two metal plates separated by a barrier. By applying a bias voltage between the contacts and having a thin enough barrier, there is a finite probability that the incident electron tunnels to the other side. If on the other side is an empty hole with the same energy as the electron, this traveling electron will not have enough energy to excite a vibration, so only elastic tunneling can take place. However, if the hole on the other plate is at a lower energy, the electron cannot tunnel through the barrier as its extra energy has nowhere to go. Some tunneling electrons can lose energy by exciting vibrations of molecules that are introduced in the gap between the plates. Therefore, when traveling electrons have enough energy to excite a vibration with an energy equal to the difference between that of the electron and the hole, inelastic tunneling occurs. With this in mind, we can understand how the presence of an other molecule allows an electron to pass across our smell receptors and trigger the nerve. This quantum model implies that our brain associates an odor to the frequency at which the concerned molecule vibrates. And several experiments have provided strong evidence towards this theory. The inelastic electron tunneling approach was first proposed by Lucas Turin in 1996 and later shown to be consistent with known physics by Marshall Stoneham and colleagues at University College London. In 2011, scientists at MIT took an odor molecule and replaced its hydrogen by deuterium. The chemical properties and shape of the molecule remain the same, but deuterium being heavier, the molecule vibrates more slowly. Flies were reported to distinctively smell the difference, meaning that they literally smell the extra neutron. The same was shown for human and fish experiments, though these studies are more controversial. However, the vibration model cannot explain everything. For example, chiral molecules are twin molecules with a slight conformational difference. Our nose can clearly smell the difference, yet specific techniques reveal that they do vibrate the same. Therefore, to explain the complex processes happening in our nose and resulting in the one trillion different smells we can distinguish, we probably need a combination of the shape model and the vibration model, that is both a lock and key and swipe card system. So it might be that the volatile molecules making it to our nose 
are first checked for their shape and then for their resonance vibration through quantum tunneling within the receptors. Both mechanisms trigger the firing of an electrical current sent to the brain via the nerves, which induces the odor sensation. Now, further insight would definitely require the ability to directly observe the nasal receptors in action. Quantum biologists have a very exciting future ahead of them. So, who said quantum physics was too abstract to intervene in our daily lives? Thanks for watching!